Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're so excited to be here with y'all today. We are painting an adorable painting for Mother's Day. So this is going to be a Highland cow, mother and child. And I have it all traced out, ready to go. So we make the process very fun and easy for y'all. I do traceables with everything that I do. And I did go ahead and work ahead a little bit and get the traceable done. I have another separate tutorial that's designated to just teach you through that process. Uh, so I will leave the link for that below. But it's also on our website on every single one of our painting kits at tipsyartist.com. So, but this gives you an idea of how we'll get started. So I did this just using graphite paper. So again, it just, just tracing over our line art. This will show you every line that I provide. And then when you trace over it, you'll have a start with me just like this. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the painting part of it now. So I'm going to go ahead and change camera views. I'm going to place this down and we're going to switch out right now. Let's see here. Okay, so let's readjust a little bit. All right, so I'll move my little mouse up here. We'll get our camera coming down close. So let's talk about our supplies today. So we've got our paint nearby. I always try to reuse your paint kit starts like this to begin with. And then I've got a little bit of some extra white and black to start our water and our brushes. So this is our little family of brushes. I've got mama, then little buddy, and then little bit. All right, and our napkins. And then here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the mama brush. This is the biggest brush that we've got. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the background. And we're going to begin with some titanium white. And then a little tiny touch of the Mars black. So I have that out here to begin with. And then I'm going to mix up just a teeny amount of brown. We have a little bit of that going on in the background. So I'm going to use some cadmium orange. Just a tiny little pea size amount. And let's mix up that brown first. All right, so I've got a little touch of the white. And then, oops, you know what? Sorry, no, not yet. <laughs> Let me mix up brown first. All right, so let's do a little touch of black. And then a little touch of the orange. We're going to mix those two together. and that will give you brown. So that's very, very dark. Now let's add the white so I can show you that progression there. See how that's like that light brown. So we can have a little bit of that to kind of touch into as we mix in the background, but it's very subtle and just a little bit of that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out again. Dab that dry. And we are starting primarily with some light gray in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of the white. Little tiny touch of the black. We're going to mix those two together. That will give us a really pretty light gray to begin with. We have a little bit more white with that. And we're going to go back and forth between those two. And just do a little bit of some crisscross back and forth to create some nice texture. Also a little bit of that white and just kind of push that in back and forth. And you can either do like vertical strokes and horizontal or a little, again, crisscrosses back and forth and kind of mix it up that way. And we're primarily using the flat side of the brush. So I'll kind of turn it more over to the side that way the flat side of the brush faces the canvas. It's more parallel to the canvas there. And then as I work, a little tiny touch of that brown can kind of flow into that space just a little bit. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit more white. And as I come around the curve of the cow, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over more to the line edge of the brush.
and then again back out to the background I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the side Go back in more to the gray, do a little bit of that cut-in work here. Grabbed a little bit of water there to help that paint just flow into that porous surface of the canvas. And grabbed a little bit more water that helps make it a little bit more translucent and I'm able to do some loose cut in around that floral finish in there so you can see how it's bleeding through the paint I'm going to crisscross back and forth here Again, just a really pretty kind of a light gray here and then I'll just touch in little bits of white working all around here and again it is a subtle mix of the gray and the white all right so now I'm going to be a little bit more playful with some of the variety of tones here. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit more white and we're going to do some light strokes just across here. And I'm going to mix these up and do a little bit more like vertical pulls, light gentle hand, just kind of barely drag across that canvas. Touch into a little bit of brown, just a teeny amount there. Cross back and forth from vertical to horizontal. And I'm just barely kind of touching over the top. So it's a really light, light touch. And I'm just going to kind of randomly place that little touch of brown over the top. And again, my brush stroke here is again, light, soft touches going across like this horizontal and then vertical. And if you get a little too heavy handed with it, you want to back off a little bit, then just come in with even more white. I'm actually really happy with the way mine is looking. I'm just going to leave it as is, light little touches here. Just that little bit of brown here and there just gets a really nice little touch. All right, so that's our beautiful kind of abstract look in the background. So let's go ahead and rinse out now. And then we're going to go ahead and get a nice base coat into our cows. I rinsed out, I'm going to dry off. That's our mama brush. And let's mix up a little bit more of that brown. So again, our brown mix is going to be cadmium orange. I get a little pea size amount here. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more. Another little pea size amount. And brown is simply just the orange with the black. You just mix those two together and that will give you your brown. And then I want this to be a bit more light and golden. So I'm going to add a little bit of the primary yellow. Do a little pea size amount off to the side there. Lighten that up a bit. And then you can even add a little bit of white to that too. Just really lighten that up. All right, so we're gonna get a nice coat of this into the big sections here. And 
And I'm going to add a lot more water to this to make it a lot more translucent. Just to get a nice little wash right over the top. It's just going to be our first coat here and I want my work to show through. The other thing that you can do too in the beginning so that you don't lose any of your trace and I'm going to do a little bit of this just to make sure and show you what I mean, but you can do the features of the face and the definition of the face with your permanent marker. This actually comes with your kit. And that way, this will definitely bleed through the paint. And then that way you will not lose those facial features. A little bit of hair there, but especially these critical parts, the nose features. You don't wanna lose that. So we're going to keep that face in place. And many times I do this in the very beginning, but I wanted to show you the difference between what just a soft pencil look, looks like. And then you don't want to touch this into wet marker. I'm sorry, wet paint, or it'll absolutely ruin your marker. So you do want to be careful with that. But I'm going to go ahead and do some of these critical shapes here. So again, some people prefer the look of just the soft pencil in the background, but then a lot of beginners also get really nervous about losing these shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like too. And this will definitely bleed through. But this paper will not lose the soft nuance of the shape of the body here. We have these little ears coming down here, a little bit of face defining there. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get our horns out. And then we'll also kind of do a soft little line here underneath where the roses begin. A lot of that can be left just kind of soft. Okay, so that's a great way to work in those facial features. Now I'm going to go back in with that beautiful light brown that we mixed up. And again, our brown mix is our orange and our black. And I added a little bit of the yellow and the white too to kind of warm it up, lighten it up. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit more water. And I'm going to go ahead and just place this foundation in. Now see how that black is just absolutely bleeding through beautifully so you're not going to lose your shape here and that's a good thing and you're also going to get down a lot of color to begin with in the beginning which is going to be very flat there's no texture yet but again this is just a first layer here so we have a lot more work to do with layering and texture but this helps build up the layering process. So again, just a solid color all the way around. And then I'm softly doing a gentle cut in around those roses here. We'll leave those. And again, just a light wash. Just gonna crisscross my pattern a little bit, make sure we've got nice, good coverage here. Okay. 
All right, progress. And I'm gonna do a light wash just over the top here too, because this is actually the top of the cow. And it does have floral covering over the top too, but we're gonna work that back in. But we wanna make sure that whatever is peeking out from behind the floral is the furry part of the cow. All right, so that's a great start. So let's go ahead and rinse out now. And to clean the brush, I do firm turns round and round and round. And then just keep pecking until it's clean and then dry off. All right, so let's go ahead and use our little bit brush. This is the smallest brush that we have. And we're gonna go ahead and work in the little horns here. So I'm gonna start with a light gray and then believe it or not, there's also a little bit of mauve in here too. So let's see here, I'm gonna do a little touch of the primary magenta. Super tiny amount. Little touch of the white and a little tiny touch of the black, just barely touch into it. Oh, slippery. All right, so we have a little bit of mauve. So that was our primary magenta, teeny amount of black and pretty healthy amount of the white in there. So that's going to be, let's add a little bit of water. This is going to be a little touch here into our horn. We'll start with that. Go ahead and paint the whole thing. And we're going to obscure the brightness of that mauve or that pink color, but it's a nice base. And we'll do the other side. Okay, and now let's go with more of the gray here. So I've got more white and a little bit more of the black. We're gonna mix those two together, like a darker gray this time. Let's add a little bit more black, make it a bit more towards the uh, charcoal. And let's add a little bit of that brown too. And remember our brown is orange and black. Okay. So again, our brown mixing with our gray, and then we're going to go ahead and do this outer part of the horn. So I'm using a little bit brush and the tip of it and just lining that darker brown with that darker gray right around that. And the pink or that soft mauve color is still a little bit wet. So there's a little bit of a soft blend between the two. Let's add a little bit of water to that. I'm gonna twirl the head of the brush into the paint to get a nice fine point. And we're gonna do the same thing here on this other side. It's a nice little line all the way down. Now let's add a little bit more white and more of that mauve, and we're gonna do a soft overpaint just right over the top of that one more time, and that will give us a nice soft blend between the two. Sort of working back and forth from light to dark. I'm gonna go right back into that dark brown one more time, and then do another soft overpaint right over the top, just on the bottom half. And again, go back into more white. And again on the other side, more white, just right up at the top. 
All right, so we have that soft fade between the two. All right, and then this same color, we're gonna go ahead and work this into the nose here on top. So I have a little bit of that mauve color, which again was our primary magenta, and a little touch of our white and a teeny touch of the black. And I'm also kind of coming into a little bit of that brown again. We'll come into the center part of the nose here. We still have that black line around it. With this nose section, we'll fill that in. And then let's rinse out because we'll do another dark outline with the teeny amount of black. Now we're going to go into that lighter shade of the warm, soft brown, and then also a little bit more of that mauve that we mixed up. And just a little soft work back and forth. So we're getting that soft blend between the two, so a little bit of a soft transition there. And then I'm going to do a little touch of soft white right up here at the top. And then let's do a little tiny touch of black again. And we're going to do a real soft little curve, almost like one side of a raindrop for that nostril shape, and then here on the other side. And then let's work on the other side a little bit here, but we're going to let this set up a little bit. And do a little bit of black back into it. A little too much water on that one.
It is one of the reasons why in this particular style with the smaller canvas, I do like the fact that it's flat because that way at least you don't get a water run there. And then I'll do a little outline there. Reinforce this little eye here. Looks like a little parentheses, another little parentheses. And kind of soft right outline around that face. Back in with that softer, light brown. A lot of white in with the brown there. And this looks like a big smile shape here. That goes to the top of the nose. So again, kind of like a parentheses. And a little bit more of the white, softly put a little texture around that little nose area. And again, a little bit more white, soft little curves. I'll pull down for like little bits of hair texture in here. And set a little bit of yellow with the white, make it more golden. And just kind of gently pull that down right over the top here, tiny little hair strokes. And then come in a little bit darker, reinforce that little bit of nuance at the end of the face coming in there. and then feathering around. So we're starting to work in texture now. So add a little bit of black and the brown. We're gonna start with that darkest part of the shadow. And work that in. And it kind of feels like you make little tiny parentheses over and over again. And just keep pulling that down. And I need to work up a little bit more mix. I want to be able to have lots to play with here. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of my orange. Do a bigger doll up there. And then let's do a bigger dot dollop of the primary yellow. And then also let's do some of this cadmium yellow that can be kind of fun and bright. We'll have a little bit of all of that in there. And 
All right, so add a little bit more of that white. And I can kind of play and dip into more of these playful colors here. And then I want a little bit more brown. It's just about out of brown, so I'm going to mix up quite a bit more brown over here. Now I've got a lot to play with because I'm going to be dipping into, let's get a closer look. I'll be dipping into the brown. Let's add some white to that to lighten it up. So brown, cadmium yellow, primary yellow, even sometimes a bit of shadowing with the black. So I have all this to play with because it's lots of little streaks back and forth. Still using a little bit brush, twirling the head of the brush into the paint. And just little gentle pulls. Again, kind of feels like you make a little parentheses. And as I work into that much lighter palette of color, you really start to see the definition of that shape quite a bit more. So this is going to get fun. So lots of repetition here. And most of this eye is actually covered. That was there more just as reference. I'm going to do a little dollop of the black here to have maybe a little bit of peak. But you know what? If you cover both eyes completely, not even a big deal. Many times, both of their eyes are covered completely, so it's okay either way. So if you go, oops, I covered both eyes. All good. It's real cute that way too. Now I'm going to go with more brown and a little bit more shadow here. A little bit more shadow up there at the ear. And let's go back in light. And I kind of switch up the hair texture a little bit. Like, for example, I'll go this way or this way. I switch it up a little bit because that hair is kind of going all over the place. And I'll do a few little pull downs, like a soft curl over that eye. So it's doing a little bit of a peak. Grab a little bit more paint to make it a bit more textural. It's just really resting on top of the surface. So I'm starting to cover that eye, but I want to re-dot and kind of make it peek out more. Soft little hair texture. And again, it's just a playful back and forth with lots of white, primary yellow, cadmium yellow, brown, sometimes a little bit of black. So that really creates more hair texture as you go back and forth between all of those. All right, see how fun that's becoming? Lots of fun texture there. All right, now we have a little baby here to do. So I'm going to do a little ear. Starting with that black shadow first, because we want to make sure that they're clearly defined here around the face.
and then we can come back in with our lighter shades here. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of the white and the yellows. Little tiny strokes around the mouth and the nose. And softly do some fur texture around that eye. But I still see where it's at, so I'm going to rework it a little bit here in just a minute. So a little touch of the black and a little parentheses and a little parentheses. I'm just going to fill that in. A little tiny textural hair stroke so just teeny tiny like it almost feels like little tiny dashes and I want to make sure and keep the shape of the bodies intact so wherever you see that it's really dark we're gonna start with more black around that area or a really dark brown so I'm gonna make sure and do short little hair like strokes for texture to keep those little legs in place, sure they have a nice shadow. And again, that shape is maintained so we don't lose that because sometimes you can do so much hair that you'll end up losing those legs and the reference of the body. So you don't want to do that. So we've got our traced out shape to begin with. So we'll start with that to begin with. Just kind of place that in. And then once we have that in, then we can come back in with more of those lights, you know, light shades and just work that in. And do short little hair-like texture in here. And if you ever feel like you're covering up those that framework of legs and body, you can come back in and kind of reshadow a little bit, keep that in place. And again, it's just like teeny tiny little parentheses, 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 but it's very tiny, light, gentle hand. Just keep working in that fun texture. Again, little bits of yellow, cadmium yellow. You can even add a little bit if you want your cows to be a little bit more um, it's redheaded, if you will. You can add a little hints of orange in there too, which is kind of fun. So we have the top of the body happening here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a black line 
here right above those roses This ear is dark, so I'm going to come next to it with light hair, little tiny hair curls and texture, but I want that contrast between the two, so I went in really light next to that. So anytime you have the black shadow that lines out legs, again, remember to come back in light around that so that you maintain those lines. And then little tiny strokes for that hair. Come back in with a little bit more black here. Or that really dark brown because I want to keep that leg out in front with the shadow. Soften up that yellow with a little bit more white and brown. Little tiny hair strokes all the way across here. And a lot more white in here too is always surprisingly really helpful when you're creating the hair texture here. It's always a little bit more white than you think. Soft little curls in here too. And then I need to rework over the top of that with that darker brown. So I'm gonna come back in with that orange and that black and just kind of soften, softly go right over the top of that again to soften that transition. Any kind of little hair strokes there. Give it that texture again. And I'm coming near this side of the face and I want to make sure that that is very contrasting. So I'm gonna come in really light right next to it. And then I need to soften that transition again. So I'm gonna go back in with the dark. So the brown, the dark brown, and let's come right back over because that hair comes right out in front. See, that looks a little bit more natural coming out in front again. Do the same thing again here. And let's go back in with that lighter shade, almost like a taupe. This is mostly that white with that little touch of brown. Lots of little soft curls here. And kind of start to switch up your curl a little bit. So some this way, some this way. And then here you kind of take it diagonal one way, diagonal the other way, kind of feather it out different directions. Make sure and protect this little line right there. You know that soft little Curls coming here on the side. And take those all the way down. A little bit of that darker brown on the edge. 
Plug that in. And then we're going to work in a little bit more of that soft, light hair right up here at the top. That's going to be flowing in behind the flowers there. And this is one of those very uh, therapeutic styles of painting where you can certainly come back in and keep kind of just making little tiny little curls of highlights coming back in between the white and the dark. Well, I think through here we make a little bit of a lighter gray. And lightly pull up through there. This is just a little bit of negative space between the legs. There are hair kind of overlap, so we're going to soften that, make that kind of blend with the background. All right, and let's do our little feet here. So it's kind of like a darker, well, actually I want to come in with a black first. Let's outline these with black. So I'm using my little bit brush and just pure black to begin with. Of course, my brush still has a little bit of those softer colors and that's okay. But I'm gonna come back in with the black. That little line that comes up in the middle. Do a little twirl into that black to get a finer point. We're basically just going over the line work that's already there. We're just getting some soft, wet paint over the top, and that'll create a nice amount of line to work back into with a lighter color. But then we'll have a soft blend with that. Rinse out, go back into more of that taupe color, which is that brown with the white. And we're just going to work that right into the little hooves here. A little bit more white there. A little twirl into the paint, get a nice fine point. I'm going to rework that little dash right in the middle because it's getting obscured a little bit too much. So rinse out and go right back in with that black. Just kind of reline that a little bit, redefine that. Really pretty. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to work in some of our little flowers in here. Actually, I see a little bit of hair that can get covered. Oh, yeah, we're good. All right, so flowers. All right, let's grab some of our cadmium red. and a bit more of our primary magenta. A pea size amount of that. And you know what? A little bit of violet can be really fun too. All right, so let's grab some more. We've got, we've got this in our plate already, but some titanium white. A little bit of that. I'm going to do this with the violet first. 
makes them that really pretty light purple. And we're just gonna make like soft, lumpy circles. This is the base of our rows. And I want one up here. Let's do one here too. And with that. And now let's do a little bit of some white and the cadmium red. White and cadmium red, very pretty. Out. And again, just making little lumpy circles at this point. So a little bit of white with our primary magenta. This is going to look a lot more pink. Big lumpy circle here. Another one here. more of that cadmium red with the white it's pretty all right so now we have lots of fun roses to play with so i'm going to go ahead and rinse out here now it's time to do the texture over the top of the roses so we're going to take a little bit again i just cleaned them off dried them off we're going to go in with some pure white now and we're going to do what looks like little tiny parentheses like that. We're gonna do that over the top of the surface. We're gonna work this in a circular pattern. So circular pattern, little parentheses shape all over the surface here. We're gonna do this on all of them. And you could even come back in in reverse too. Like for example, you can work back in a little bit more. Oops, got too much water on that one. You can work back in and come back in with more dark if you like lighten it up a little bit too much. You can also add a little tiny shadow right in the center. So you can take your darkest shade. So for example, I'll come back in dry brush here, just moist, a little bit of the dark purple, and I'll just do a little tiny comma right in the center. There's that little shadow, a little comma, comma. It's real subtle. Same thing here, darkest little amount of cadmium red. We're going to do that right in the center here, a little comma. 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 Now we want that darkest shadow of primary magenta, a little comma.
you can also do little tiny dots of the black in the center, almost like the little seeds. So you take the end of the brush, do a little touches into that pure black, see, and then you'll just touch down and you can go one, two, three, little tiny seeds right in the middle. Just barely touch the canvas. One, two, three. Super gentle touch. All right, really nice. One other option too, a lot of people like it minimal like this, but if you want to come back in with a shadow and an echo of the same petal stroke, you can do that too. So let me show you that. So I've got my primary magenta a little bit darker and I can do a little, like again, just parentheses, parentheses, just adds a little bit of shadow there. Let's try that cadmium red. Little shadow, parentheses, parentheses, that's the stroke. Really nice. Now we can do some really pretty little green leaves. All right, so let's do some Viridians, really nice. It has kind of a teal color to it. And then also our light yellow green. Pea size amount there and some cadmium green. That's also kind of fun. A pea size amount. And of course, more titanium white with the blend. And even sometimes a little bit of black with your green can make a nice little sage. I'll show you some of that. So a little bit of white with our cadmium green. Little tiny amount of black. So how that's a really pretty little sage green now. So the leaf stroke will look like a parentheses, a parentheses. Add a little bit more white to that there. Maybe a little bit of viridian there too. Make this kind of stand out. Parentheses, parentheses, tiny little strokes. And twirl the brush a little bit, get a nice fine point, maybe do a little stem. It comes out and on the side in a diagonal on each side of the stem, you do that little parentheses, parentheses, fill that in. Go either direction there. And if your paint's still wet, of course, you can let that set up and dry a little bit before you do this so that you don't softly blend into it. I'm just using a really light, gentle hand to kind of tap out those green leaves right over the top there. But I'm being very gentle because my paint is still wet underneath.
many times it'll leave just almost little tiny patches. The brush does the work for you. Yeah, let's not forget about our little baby cow down here. Got little leaves there too. And then you can make little flowers that come off to the side as well. So this is a fun little trick you can do. Let's use the end of the brush again. Something kind of bright. We can use a little bit of orange. And just touch, touch, touch. See that little fun flower there? Makes cute little perfect circles. Do the same thing here. All right, very nice. Also, you can do some little draw with this cadmium red here. So dot, 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 dot. More little flowers that have come out. Yeah, there we go. I think we're done for today. Looks really beautiful. Cute little Highland cows here. Just kind of doing a little once over here. And you can reperm up some of those shadows or retexture a little bit if you want. Come back in and do more little tiny hairline texture if you want. There's lots of wonderful therapy all wrapped up in this. This is very relaxing to do this kind of stroke over and over again. And very playful. So now all this left is our signature. And for something this small, I typically like to use my little permanent marker that comes with the kit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign right here. Ta-da, way to go. Good job, you guys. Another masterpiece, so proud of y'all. Great work. Again, everything that you need to make this process very fun and easy is on our website, tipsyartist.com. We have all the supplies that comes in a really cute little box, even with fun little party favors for y'all too. So enjoy, have a beautiful rest of the day, and we'll see you soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.